The learning objectives of this section are to be acquainted with the main parts of the steam plant, understand the steam cycle. In this training module, we will look at a steam plant on a VLCC with diesel engine as propulsion machinery. The exhaust boiler capacity at MCR is sufficient for the turbo generator and heating. The oil fired boiler of the dual pressure or double evaporation type has a capacity of 50 tons per hour at 15 bar and 410 degrees centigrade. The four main parts of a steam plant are boiler, turbine, condenser, feed water pump. In the boiler we are heating water and steam by burning oil. Some of the energy content of the steam is converted to mechanical energy in the turbine. Exhaust steam from the turbine is cooled in the condenser and the condensate brought back to the boiler by the feed water pump. The series of processes involved is called a steam cycle. The working principle of the dual pressure boiler. In the primary system water is heated by the oil burners in the combustion chamber. The steam from the primary system is fed to the heat exchanger in the secondary system. As the primary system is completely closed, this system has several advantages. The feed water will never be contaminated and will be free of any oxygen. Meaning that we will not have any scale formation or corrosion on the water side. We do not need a DA rater in the primary system. The heating surface will always be cooled by the water flow and this will eliminate the danger of burning down the tube stack. As the primary steam is heating the secondary steam, the temperature will not rise above the evaporating temperature, 30 bar corresponding to approximately 235 degrees centigrade. This will reduce possible deposits on the heating coil in the secondary steam drum. In the oil-fired boiler, the water in the risers are heated and small bubbles of steam are formed inside the tubes. The steam, water, is at evaporating temperature entering the steam drum and the colder water in the steam drum is falling back to the water drum through the downcomers. This circulation will continue as long as we are firing the boiler. In the secondary steam drum, the primary steam is entering the heating coils at a temperature corresponding to the pressure. The steam is condensed in the coil and the water is flowing back to the steam drum of the primary system. The secondary steam leaves the drum at a pressure of say 15 bar and a temperature of 197 degrees centigrade and is passing through the superheater before it enters the turbine. In the superheater the wet steam is heated to approximately 410 degrees centigrade and it leaves the superheater completely dry. The steam is entering the turbine casing, throttled by a control valve. Depending on the size and type of the turbine, the steam is passing one or several groups of nozzles. The condenser is of a seawater cooled tube and shell type. A large capacity condenser may have up to 6,000 tubes. The vacuum in the condenser is normally obtained by using one or more steam driven ejectors. By lowering the vacuum, one may pull more power out of the turbine. 
but on the other hand, the temperature of the condensate will also be lower and the total plant efficiency will be reduced. Feed water to the secondary system is pumped by a feed water pump. From the feed water tank through the economizer before it is entering the secondary boiler drum. Before we have a closer look at the main components of the steam plant, we will repeat some of the fundamentals of steam production. As you know, the boiling temperature of water is dependent on the pressure. When we are heating the water at constant pressure, the temperature will increase until we reach the saturation temperature. The water will start to evaporate and the necessary amount of energy to achieve this is called enthalpy of evaporation. This energy will remain the steam until the steam is condensed. When we continue to heat the saturated water, it will be drier and become saturated steam. The steam in the steam water drum will always be saturated because it is in contact with water. When all the water in the steam has been evaporated and we still are adding more heat, the steam will be superheated. At constant pressure, the temperature will increase and we are talking about degree of superheating. After the steam has passed the turbine, two-thirds of the total energy content added in the boiler has to be released to condensate the steam. This energy is called the enthalpy of condensation. Like evaporation temperature of water, the condensation temperature of steam is dependent on the pressure. To minimize the loss of energy in the condenser, it is important to maintain the outlet temperature of the condensate as high as possible. This is achieved by controlling the condenser pressure and the cooling water flow. In addition to the major losses in the condenser, we have other minor losses like the heat in the exhaust gas, incomplete combustion, radiation losses from the boiler, air, steam and water leakage. This is reduced to a minimum by the heat transferred in the economizer and the air preheater. As the fuel oil contains sulphur, care must be taken not to reduce the gas temperature below the dew point of the sulfuric gas. With a sulphur content in the fuel of 0.5%, the dew point is approximately 100 degrees centigrade and at 5% as high as 160 degrees centigrade. This is influenced by fuel oil viscosity, burner maintenance, fuel oil pressure, atomizing steam pressure, air-oil mixing, air-oil ratio and fuel oil quality. Radiation losses from the boiler casing and piping due to damaged insulation and brickwork. Air leakage in forced draft fans and ducting including air preheater. Any steam leakage in valves and piping system. When we add up these losses, we end up with a thermal boil efficiency of approximately 